Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and I love to investigate crime. I'm also a huge history nerd. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. And each day, I'm going to share some of my favorite deep cuts with you. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365 with MXM Tune. Today, in 1993, a major art heist happened in Sweden. Thieves cut a hole in the roof of the Stockholm Museum of Modern Art. Yes, I agree that sounds like something from a movie, but it did actually happen. The thieves ripped the heart out of the museum's Picasso collection, stealing $52 million worth of uninsured paintings. The paintings weren't insured because they were state property. Your guess is as good as mine as to why Sweden doesn't insure state-held art. The thieves got seven framed paintings and a Picasso bronze sculpture bringing it all out through the aforementioned hole in the roof. Most of the loot was from the Picasso collection, but two of the paintings were by George Brock. The paintings were considered to be some of the museum's most important works, so it was a doubly devastating loss. The break-in was discovered the next Monday morning. There was a three-by-three hole in the roof, footprints on the white walls, and shattered glass on the floor. And, you know, seven missing paintings and a missing sculpture— but the police couldn't find any trace of the tools or the rope that they believed the thieves would have used to get into the room. No alarms went off during the theft, leaving the museum officials thoroughly confused. The museum is on an island, so boats were quickly sent to search the surrounding waters, and helicopters searched the skies, but the boats and helicopters didn't find any evidence, as the thieves were already long gone with the stolen goods. Museum security had been cut in the last few years as part of national budget cuts, and the chief of the museum blamed these cuts for the theft and criticized the government's role. A week later, someone left eight paintings that looked like the stolen ones outside the museum, but they were quickly recognized as forgeries. The museum's head of security reported that he realized the paintings couldn't be the originals because they smelled clearly of paint. He said they were dry, but I'd say they were made last week. It was unclear if the forged paintings had been made by the thieves themselves, co-conspirators, or an unrelated forger. A little over a month later, on December 17th, three of the Picassos were recovered. The recovered paintings were Woman with Blue Collar, Dragonfly, and The Painter. Two of the suspects were arrested. The rest of the thieves were caught and charged in 1995. The three men were Swedish and were arrested in Belgium when they tried to sell one of the paintings— Women with black eyes for 65 million. Uwe Willy Donlin was sentenced to five years in prison. Matsker Svirins was sentenced to two and a half years, and his brother, Patrick Svirins, was sentenced to two years. One painting, Brock's still life, was still missing after the arrest, though the rest of the paintings were recovered. The recovery of the paintings was really lucky. Overall, only 5-10% to 10% of stolen art is ever recovered. The biggest art theft in history was from the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston in 1990. 13 paintings were stolen and never recovered. And the value of the stolen paintings was over $500 million. The theft was completed by two men disguised as police officers, who broke into the museum after it was closed and managed to overpower the guards. Though art theft seems like it could have a big potential payoff of millions of dollars, it's not an easy kind of theft to pull off. For starters, thieves have to deal with complex museum security systems, but beyond that, it's actually hard to sell the art once it's stolen. This is because any buyer who has the knowledge and capital to want the paintings will probably know that it's stolen, and even advertising the sale is a clear tip-off to authorities. Even if someone steals art just to display it in their home, there's a high likelihood that it will eventually be recognized by friends or family, some of whom might not take kindly to their acquaintance being an art thief. Sometimes thieves will hold art for ransom, but that's not a foolproof method as it just kind of puts them at risk of a sting operation. For example, the Naples-based Camorra Crime Clan stole two paintings from the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam in 2002. Sometimes called a secret society, the Camorra is one of the largest criminal organizations in Italy, more notorious for drug trade and human trafficking than art theft. 
The Van Goghs were eventually discovered in a house near Pompeii during a cocaine raid. In the 14 years before the crooks were caught and the paintings were found, the Camorra clan members were never able to sell the artwork. Even art dealers on the black market are wary of incredibly famous paintings. Despite all this drama, billions of dollars worth of art still goes missing every single year. The FBI has a special task force of 14 agents who focus on stolen art. New dream job, anyone? And their database has 7,600 individual items of art reported missing, ranging in value from $2,000 to tens of millions of dollars. And where does all the art go? Your guess is as good as mine, but I know that it's something I'll be thinking about well into the future. Today, we have a wonderful guest. Johnny is a bedroom pop aficionado and one of my personal favorite musicians. I listen to his music constantly. One of my favorite songs is Anything You Want. He also has hits like Honey Pie and Crazy For Your Love. Today, he's here to talk about the monumental day of his first headlining tour. Okay, so on November 7th of last year, Feels like forever ago. But on November 7th of last year, I was playing my first sold-out show in New York. I was terrified uh, the morning and afternoon leading up to it because I'd never sold out a show before. I never had that many people. I never just had a show where people were there to see me. Uh, Previous to that, I was just an opening act. Um... And it's crazy to think that that was a year ago because so much has changed since then. Like, if we fast forward to now... I just last week released my debut like major label project. It's called For Abby. Uh, I worked on that for the first four months of quarantine and then eight months prior to lockdown. Um, And since November 7th, after that, I went on to travel the entire world. I went to Australia. I went to Oslo. I went to Berlin. I went to Paris. I played a show in Amsterdam that was sold out. Uh, just my, my whole life has just changed ever since then. And uh, it's just nice to look back and see the progress within the year. I hope anybody listening to this is in good health. I hope your family is in good health. Um, send in some positive energy your way. Everybody have a good day. Johnny out. And now for our final segment of the day, I'm going to be looking into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a November 7th in my life. On November 7, 2016, I started watching one of my all-time favorite animes for the first time, Mob Psycho 100. I talk about anime occasionally, but it's something that I've been watching my whole entire life, and if you ever need recommendations on which ones to get into, Mob Psycho 100 is one of my favorites. I actually own the manga for it, too. Um, It's just, like, a great series. It's also about, like, paranormal activity and everything like that. It's very fun. You should definitely check it out. But that's all for today. Thanks for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and come back tomorrow for more facts from yesterday. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff. No, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's three.